G'day, welcome back. It's been a while, I apologise. But in this video, we're going to be covering the main gear installation, the main spar installation, and the winglets. We just finished them off. So, enjoy. As you can see, we're installing the main gear, the centre or the main spar, and we started the winglets. We'll start this video with the main gear. The first step was to ensure the gear legs were centered. Here you can see I've used my right angled laser to align the center of the gear leg with the center of the firewall. The next step was to bond the gear saddles to the gear leg. There's a few ways we did this, but we start by using this putty stuff, which we call micro glass, to fill in the gaps around the gear leg and gear pockets. The putty is just a mixture of micro and epoxy. The next layups were 10 layers of triax on top of the gear legs. They were left for at least 24 hours to dry, then we could trim up the rough bits with my multi-tool, and then we begin to really secure in the gear legs. Here Anna is filming as I nervously drill a guide hole over the top of the gear legs with a long quarter inch drill bit for my one inch hole saw. This was pretty nerve wracking as I focused on getting the right angle through all the layers of the glass and wood. The vibrations you see from, are from my bent hole saw. The fiberglass wreaked havoc on my really cheap hole saw blade, so I had to file some teeth back into it to complete the job. I changed drills a few times to see if I could get a better cut. In the end, I ended up sticking with my high speed drill. Several times I had to back the hole saw out to clear the swath. On the first cut, it was important not to drill completely through, so I had a good guide hole when I drilled from the other side. I think here I've had to resharpen the hole saw again. I've since bought a better hole saw, but I was in no mood to go buy one now. And now the finishing cut. These cuts were to only pass through the bulkheads. The next holes to be drilled out were to house the steel tube or the bolt bushing with the outer diameter of 16 millimeter. Getting this hole straight now without guide holes was requiring some thought. So I ended up making this guide up which was an inch wide with an internal diameter of 16 millimeters. For some reason it didn't work really well but the steel tube went straight through both sides of the gear pocket. On the bulkheads I had to grind out the uh, one inch holes a little so the nail bushings would fit. What's so hard about doing it flawlessly the first time? While enlarging the holes my drill decided to stop working when I turned it upside down so I suspected a broken power wire so work stopped while I made repairs. But anyway, the bushings get glued in with more micro glass with the half inch bolts so a bit of clearance is okay. The next step is to cover the steel tubes with more glass. I decided to fill up my epoxy pump before I did this and something is going on with my hardener. It tends to gel up over time and it goes like jelly making it impossible to pour. 
So what I have to do is I have to mix it up with a paint mixer for a few minutes so I can uh, pour it out. I've had to do this a few times. Also, over time it's gone a bit darker, but I'm pretty sure it still works fine. Once the nail bushings are glued in, some triax is applied over the nail bushings on the front and the back. While reading ahead in the manual, I realized I'd missed some layups around the gear pockets, and I had to make up a template for the glass that was going to go in. I, uh, not having any clearance between the gear pockets and the bulkheads, it kind of made it a bit tricky, so I kind of just stuffed it in as best as I could, so that any vertical movement of the gear from uh, something like a hard landing had to push through the glass. So I found some of this black tubing and uh, I think it's for pressurized air and the internal diameter of it is perfect for the hydraulic brake lines. So I didn't have uh, heaps of it. So what I've done is I've used what I've had to route down the gear leg down to the brake caliper. I still have to fiberglass it in place. The last step is to attach the axles onto the end of the legs. Here is another opportunity to do something perfectly the first time. The first thing I noticed was that I couldn't just drill my holes at right angles to the gear. The axles need to have a certain angle and the wheels need to have a certain toe-in angle. This block of wood, this was my second attempt at making a template for the axle holes. The crap thing about the aircraft building thing is the lack of clearance between bolts and holes. I've grown up with the metric system where the M10 bolt fits easily into an M10 hole. That's because the bolt is not really 10 millimeters. It's 9.5. So you've got wiggle room. With an AN standard bolt, say an AN6, it really is 3 8 so if you drill a 3 8 hole, the bolt may or may not fit. Whatever the case, you're probably going to have a bad time getting it to go in. You're going to have a bad time! I spent a lot of time trying to get the right angle for this axle, uh, but I won't be able to completely finish it off um, until I get the at least the engine weight on the gear legs. And that's uh, a pretty long way down the track. On to the main spar. I already did most of the hard work of aligning the spar so we can fly straight. Now the gear was on, I had no excuse and I had to lock the spar in place. A final check with the fuselage level and several test clamping, we had applied a generous amount of structural adhesive, clamped in place and weighted. While I waited for the adhesive to cure, I mixed up some micro glass to radius the corners between the firewall and the spar. Two layers of bi-directional glass were laid over the corners. Then a lot of triax was cut and applied. I had to make little ramps from the gear bulkheads to the top of the spar. The extra layers of glass above the spar served to strengthen the firewall for the engine mount bolts. There is more glass to go on once the top half of the fuselage is on, but for now, we're done. Okay, finishing up the winglets. These guys got two layers of unidirectional glass slightly offset from each other. Unidirectional is really thin glass with strands of glass running parallel on the cloth. One of the winglets developed some bubbles that I only noticed after the epoxy was set. I think the problem was I didn't stretch the fabric tight over the foam. The fix for this was to sand down the bubbles and apply another layer of glass over the top. A few hours after applying the glass, I realized that the fibers were running the wrong way and would not provide any lengthwise strength. Rather than redoing the patch up, I applied a smaller patch on top with the strands running in the correct direction. It was probably not needed, but I have peace of mind that it'll be strong enough. All right, if you're still with me, um, not very interesting, sorry, it's, uh, it's just building. Uh, fiberglass putting it all together but what I have to cover yet is still the nose gear uh, combined with the center spar and also we'll 
I think I'm probably going to build the canard wing next. So that's that beam over to your left there. Okay, I think um, I don't think it's going to be that long to do. I might try and actually just film every part of that while I'm doing it. We're, we're just trying a bit of an experiment with that one. Um, I don't know if we'll get to installing the elevators on it just yet. I just might like to get it built and move on. So the, the speed of the build, I'd like to uh, note that, uh, yeah, it's probably been about five months since the last video. So, and uh, that's all we've done, but it's not really. So what I've been doing in my spare time and in the evenings is writing the software for my own uh, instrument panel or ethos. So I'm going to be writing that uh, and testing it and uh, right now it's looking really good. It's still not uh, good enough to share <laughs> with the public just yet. Uh, there's still a lot of kinks to work out but uh, I, I think it's going to be pretty impressive. Um, I think it's if it's not better than what's commercially available, it's uh, it's more suited to what I want. So that's what I'm looking forward to uh, at the moment is uh, just bringing the instrument panel together with all the little electric components in the plane and um, yeah, just get it built. All right, see you on the next one.